So in this session, we will create the quick N2 mount backing plate for our press frame uh, support assembly, exploring some more options with the whole wizard. So let's do this. We're going to, just like we've done before, we want to go to new and uh, we want to click on our favorite tutorial or in our template folder, our favorite template, the digital tutors uh, part template for IPS inch pound seconds. If you don't have that, go ahead and go to the tutorial tab and click on part. Just make sure you change your units to inch pound seconds. So we're going to click on that guy. We're going to go to OK. We're going to start from the very top of work way down just to get ourselves in some good habits. So instead of my part 12, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we're going to call that uh, the end tube mount backing plate. End tube mount backing plate. I was just practicing this, so I, I have that part actually created here, but I'm going to go ahead and write over that. So I'm going to go to save, and I'm going to write right over that. But for you, it's going to be in the new part in a folder that we've been using throughout this tutorial. So we're going to work our way down again from the top. We don't have to worry about history or sensors or annotations right now, but we're going to go to material and we're going to right click on that. And if you don't see your material in here, for some reason it gives you a list of 13, not 10 or 12, but 13 uh, items in here you can choose from. If your item gets bumped out, the uh, last one you put in here usually goes in the bottom. We can remedy that by going to edit material. So the way you would do that, first of all, you want to pick ASTM uh, A36 steel if you don't have that. If that got bumped by the other material that we added in a previous lesson, this is what you would do. So you go to favorites, and if you need to, you'd add it. If it's already in there, it's going to tell you that. But you could also rearrange the furniture in here, too. Let's say you don't want uh, perhaps nickel to be in the middle here. You want it on the bottom. Maybe it's the least used item in here. You can click on that and move that all the way down to the bottom. Let's say some of the other things you might want to use more often, like brass. Maybe you want to move that up. I'm going to move that down to just below uh, alloy steel. But uh, the, the premise here is that you pick material here, and then you, uh, you move it up and down your favorites folder here, and then you have it available for next time. So we already clicked ASTM A36 steel. Uh, we've already added it. So if we go back to properties, we can apply those. And I think they're already applied, but let's just do that again. And then we can go to close. Okay, enough said there. Let's go to our front plane. Let's go to our center rectangle. We're going to make another symmetric part. This time it's going to be six inches on the bottom and 2.75, two and three quarters of an inch on the side. Okay, we're going to go to features, extruded boss space. We're going to do mid plane, just like we did before. In our installation pad, we're going to make that 0.375. And you notice it does as much material on the back as it does in the front. And we want the, you know, the front plane right down the middle of that thing, so we're all set to go. And then we're going to go to the green chalk mark. So there we have our part. Next item is going to be our whole wizard. Before we do that, let's go ahead and rename that. We're going to call that base, just to be consistent with what we've done before. Then our whole wizard. Nice thing about the whole wizard is when we put that feature in there, it borrows some of the elements that help define that hole and incorporates that into the name of our whole wizard feature. So we don't have to rename that. Okay, so remember last time we put in that three quarter of an inch hole in our insulation pad? Well, it kind of, re, uh, three eighths of an inch hole, I should say, in our insulation pad, it's gonna remember that. So if we start from the very top, it remembers what we set. We want it whole, ANSI inch, screw clearance, three eighths of an inch, close. Um, we don't need to check custom sizing. Uh, we went through all just like last time. It does remember our nearer side countersink, or maybe it didn't. If you don't have those uh, checked, you don't need, really need to check those right now. But we can go ahead and apply those. So if we go to positions, click on that face just like we did before. It's waiting for points. And uh, we can jump right up here to our sketch uh, tab on our uh, command manager and start drawing in some reference geometry just like we did before. Or we can start putting in points in here. We can put them in a random, random location and then as an alternative, and then just add our reference geometry later, which is going to be right now. So start a line from top to bottom, from midpoint to the top, midpoint to the bottom. Another one from that edge to this edge. And the dimension on this one is going to be 5 sixteenths of an inch. I'm sorry, 15 sixteenths. And if you don't remember what the numbers are, 0.9375, if you type in 15 and then, you know, divided by 16, you know, 15 slash 16, it's going to remember that and make the conversion for us. We're going to go to the green chalk mark there. 
I don't really like a 0.938 because we really didn't enter a 0.938, entered a 0.9375. So let's go ahead and take that dimension and override the document properties by typing in or by selecting four units after the decimal. I think that's a little bit more descriptive. So now we have our points in here. Let's go ahead and do escape once or twice if you have to just get out of the smart dimension uh, format in there. And let's take our points and move those around. Move those into locations that we see fit. We're going to keep this, we're going to exaggerate this one, maybe put that up there, even though that's not where it really goes. And we're going to put our, in our dimensions uh, in a very similar manner that we did last time. This is going to be 2.25. And let's do this. Let's take that hole, this hole, and this center line. Let's select all three of those with our control key depressed. And let's pick the symmetric relationship. It's kind of like doing a mirror command. It might be a little bit easier to do it that way. But now that we have all of our holes in place, if we go to the green check mark, we're all set to go. So now you can see that uh, the feature name for our uh, hole wizard is called 3 8 inch uh, clearance hole 1. Very descriptive. Let's go back into that. Let's go ahead and edit that. And let's take that hole and make that a favorite. So we don't have any favorites selected, but if we go up here to that green uh, plus sign on, our, on, the, on, the, on the pentagram, on the star, we can add or update favorites. And we're just gonna keep the name of them here for a 3 8 inch clearance hole and then go to okay. So now when we wanna apply that hole, which we will in the next lesson, we're gonna to have to, we're gonna use our favorite. But let's create a new favorite here too. Let's do a near side countersink. If we scoot in on this and take a look at that, you can see what the countersink is gonna look like in that preview. Instead of a 0 .3, uh, 0 0.4360, let's make that 0 0.5. Let's make that a half an inch, a little bit more dramatic. Now, we're probably not going to use a, a bolt that would have that conformity to it, but just to show you a different uh, hole wizard from last time, let's go ahead and do that. And while we're here, let's go back up to favorites and create a brand new one. 3 8 inch clearance hole dash countersink. Of course, if you get a lot of favorites in here, you might want to qualify that a little bit more by maybe calling that one divided by two countersink. Then we'll go to OK. Then we'll go to our green check mark. And just to make sure that we're getting the right thing, let's go back to Whole Wizard and see if we can get a, a favorite uh, selected here. So now we should have two. Three of this inch clearance hole. If you go to position, we're going to click on that and put a hole in here. We'll go to the green check mark. Let's do that again. Let's go back to Whole Wizard just real quick. And we'll do the same thing, but this time we'll pick the 3 8 inch hole countersink. Go to positions and we'll put a hole over here. And then we should have that countersink hole. So that is really fast. That's really effective. I really like that. So these last three ones, we can go ahead and add some more description to it if we wanted to do that. But we're going to right click on that and we're going to delete those. And yes to all. So now we have our countersink holes. Let's go back to this one, our original hole feature, a hole. Uh, wizard feature. Now let's go back to our 3 inch uh, clearance hole and go to the green check mark and we should be ready to go.